So hello, welcome back. This is Jacobitz Learning Group, Algebra 1's one, so one Step Equations. So as we're here, I want you to look at the structure of this equation. When you have a denominator here of 2, you have a 2 here, of course you know you have a common denominator. But then when you come over here and look at this 4, it's different. So you've got to make these two common denominators come with a 4, okay? And that's just the way this situation is, okay? So if we wanted to do that, and we want to get ourselves a common denominator, <laughs> all we'd have to do is we have to turn this into a proper fraction because right now it's mixed. So this is 4 times 1 is 4. And then this is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So that's 5 fourths. Okay? And over here you've got to get this 10 and this 6 together. Probably a number both of them go into would be 30. You could also do 60. Uh, you can't do 25. You can't do 20. And if you can't do 40, so something that they will evenly divide into. All right, so now before I turn the page, we give you a chance to look at that. Now let's go over to this. When I put the denominators here, I wanted to show you what to do because actually if this was the original equation and I went ahead and put the two here for you, I did some of the work. So I just want to show you how easy it is to look at an equation like this, and they appear differently, but on some levels, like, they're kind of not, you know? And even if you put this differently and you made it negative a half, you know, plus x, because remember, this x over here is positive. So get in the habit of looking at what things really are, all right? So now, okay, now here we had 5 over 4, so we changed this to 5 over 4, and we brought it here. And now we're going to go x over 2 minus 1 over 2, because that's already done, equals 5 fourth. But instead of changing our denominator, since we already have a variable up here, what we're going to do is we're just going to multiply this by the denominator. If this was if this were 2, we could just go ahead and solve this and go x minus 1 equals, you know, 5 over 2 or it's another way to do that, but we'll talk about this one now. When you multiply it by 4 and you have to do whatever you do on this side, you have to do on this side. And remember 4 equals 4 over 1. So this 4 and this 4 cancel out. You get 1 over 1. And this is just plain old 5. And then this is a separate matter. 2 goes into itself one time, but 2 goes into 4 two times. And then 2 goes into itself one time. So let's take a look at that. When we see this on the next slide, once again, let's go like this. So this then becomes a 2 here. This becomes a 1, and you have to take it over both everything that's in this bracket. This becomes 1. Now, when we transfer this, or distribute this, we have 2 over x over 1 minus 2 times 1, but it's negative, but our negative sign is right here, so it's 2 over 1 equals... We already did this on the other slide. This is 1 over 1. So this is 5 times 1 equals 5. And this is 1 times 1 equals 1. So it's 5 over 1. Now we have this. If you use the reflexive property, this 1 cancels out. So this equation becomes 2x minus 2 equal to 5. So now let's go ahead and solve it. Okay, so now you can just solve the equation straight out 
And this is called the additive inverse or the inverse of negative 2, which equals it equals, this is an equal sign, not an approximation sign, so I'm going to make it darker, equals 5 plus 2, which is 2x equals 7. These are canceled, right? So you just bring the 2x over. And now, because it's 2 times x, that's what this means, 2 times x equals 7. You have to take the inverse. Because you're multiplying here, you've got to divide to take this to the other side. So you're multiplying here, so you've got to divide. So this is a half times 2 over 1. Remember, you take the inverse, equals 7 times 1 over 2. And this x was here, but I kept it out in the bracket by itself. So this is just straight across, 2 over 2 x equals 7, same thing as saying 7 over 1, 7 times 1 is 7 over 2. So x equals 7 halves. So now we need to check it. We'll do that on the next slide. Okay, now we want to check if x is equal to 7 over 2. And so 7 over 2 divided by 2, you just go ahead and put it up. And don't let this extra bar here scare you. That bar is really just another division sign. And we took care of it here. It's divided by 2 over 1. So you can't divide straight because remember, in order to do this, because these don't divide out evenly, you need an inverse operation. And the inverse of division is multiplication. The inverse of, uh, of addition is subtraction. So you need the inverse, so you have to multiply. And we're going to do that on the next page. Okay, so this says um, divide both sides, but now we're going to change this to multiply. So if you look at what's going on, all you do is you take this, switch it around, and you take its inverse, you take its opposite, and it becomes a half. Okay, and then we did that here. So when you get seven and a half, you're getting, you're getting 7 over 4 minus a half equals 5 fourths. You have one denominator that's different, so let's go ahead and take care of that. Now what do you do? You're going to do the same thing. You need to get your common denominator, which is 4. 2 goes into 4 2 times, and 2 times 1 is 2. So now that becomes 7 over 4 minus 2 over 4, which equals 5 fourths. And 5 fourths equals 5 fourths. Now you know that you've done the problem correctly. This is pretty intense, so the rest of these are going to stay for number two. We'll go ahead and do that some other time, but try to rewind this, go over this, and see how it works for you. Thanks a lot for watching.